The Legacy Experience has been brought to you in part by Sage, Cortland, Islander Precision Fly Reels, Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. Now not only are the whales obviously brilliant at corralling bait, but so are salmon. And when you look at a bay like we're in right here, I've just seen fish smashing right at the head of that bay. We know we've got the bait in here and they can make that bait move as well. And once they have it corralled, this one move very slowly. What a great spot to catch salmon. Now the salmon are corralling all the bait, the herring. Look at that sonar. Unbelievable. You can see we've got a tide rip starting here. Just that soft water you see off that rock point. And if I can sneak out of this wind and out of that tide rip that's in here, I'm in a perfect spot to get a salmon. And the shallower the water is, much easier to target. You can see the bait hovering there in 30 feet. I'm in 51 feet of water. Give me just a little reverse. See how we're drifting. Let's see if I can get a cast in there. I'm right over top of where those fish were busting. So, but you can see the winds can play a little bit of havoc now. We'll have to cast up. Get a little bit of line up. While that line's sinking. Let it get down to the 50 feet. The tide, you can see, is the kelp is pushing this way. Okay. Here we go. Well, I don't think I've seen a prettier spot to fish. And the tide's really coming up quick. All right, what do we got here? We're just doing a really nice wind tack, super relaxing, just heading up to the point and just utilizing this whole bay, getting that line down. Beautiful wind drifts. What are you doing? Just letting that little interpretive clouser just out there, just in the ozone. But luckily we've moved in about 50, 60 feet of water for this tack. Whoa, nice fish. Actually thought that was a bottom fish. He bit so light. Ooh, it's a big guy though, really big. Big northerns. Wild rivers, wild fish. Where are you going? Where are you going? You can only go airbound now. Oh yeah. There he goes. 
All the line taken off. Coming right at you. There he goes. To the reel. Might be a small Chinook. Unbelievable, what a day. Gorgeous light breeze. Blowing down Fitzhugh Sound. Mark and bait. And the bait happens to be hanging in 50, 60 feet of water. It just doesn't get better than that. Come right out of that 90 foot zone. Look at the size of this guy. Whoa. If you're thinking of an unbelievable place to come saltwater fly fishing, This is it. Some of the best waters for saltwater fly fishing that exist in British Columbia. And if you're into fly fishing and have a real passion for it and want to catch a silver salmon on the fly, I don't right now know of a better spot to do it. Oh, this is just a big northern tank. July or August. August, a lot of these bigger fish are in. Oh, just a big, big tank. Healthy. There we go. That's a big bad boy. That is. Wow. All right. You have to have hemostats like this on the boat because with the tinier hooks, like a little surgical stitch you're taking out. Okay, let's put you back. Get one more nice look at you. Oh. Aren't they spectacular? Interpretive clousers. Big, bright fish like that. Unbelievable. You can see that fly. Big northern fish. Today we're talking about interpretive clouser patterns. This one is tied by Phil Dawson. You can see it's got the medium barbell eyes. It's got the white and it's got the chartreuse or the yellow, just a tiny bit of flash tail in it. A piece of mono was tied in at the head of the fly as the first process in the fly tying. And a little four or six black octopus gamagatsu. Now because it's small and it has mobility no matter what that fish does and that last fish had a lot of opportunities to get off near the boat 15 pound suffix in Invisalign fluorocarbon two foot to our tapered leader with a non-slip loop knot so right now they're corralling the bait into this bay whales are incredible when it comes to understanding the environmental relationship in a marine e ecosystem between bait, salmon, and how it all works together. As they're smashing bait, the salmon are simply near them waiting for that crippled bait that's falling down. And it's an incredible thing to see. I mean, you'll only see it a few times in your life if you're out on these waters. We've got about 70 feet of water turning into 40. We've got a real nice, a gentle breeze and you can see the whole shoreline that we have that that fly is going to stay in the water all we're doing is casting out you don't even have to cast i'm just maximizing the 30 meter line or the 100 foot line 90 to 100 feet you can see we've got our whole fly line out there i'm fishing a 50 foot zone we've marked bait 
We know the baits here because we've seen the whales bubble feeding. We've also, behind the whales, we've seen salmon coming up and smashing the crippled bait. This cove that we're in is absolutely epic for saltwater fly fishing. It has everything you need. It has kelp, uh, and we've seen that all with the electronics, and we've marked the bait. So all we really have to do now, and we've actually seen arcs of fish, which is the dead giveaway, just simply using the breeze to our advantage, interpretive clousers with small to medium barbell eyes, eight weight fly gear, four piece. It's an XI3 890-4, beautiful Islander fly reels, LX 3.8, anodized for saltwater use. And once you get that fly near the boat, once you've completed your first retrieve, all you do is take your line, stack mend it, so that fly stays in the zone for your entire tack. By just staying here about 45 minutes and just listening and watching, and the fish have really have come to us just by picking out locations that have that, those, there, oh yeah, unbelievable. You can't even believe it. It's one of the few fisheries that you can literally just sit and wait for things to happen. As, lo as long as the key characteristics are put together for knowing where a bait will hold up. Got them rolling in it. Wow, they love to roll. But where are you going? Where are you going? That is so cool watching the bait and the salmon work the bait. It's a good sized fish. Now the trouble will come here if he takes off because I never got this fish to the reel. See that clouser there? Just holds so beautifully on that fish. Saltwater fly fishing for salmon. Stunning big northerns like that. Aren't they spectacular? What a species of fish. All for the anglers right here in Rivers Inlet. Saltwater fly fishing the Pacific for salmon. Unbelievable. Now, interpretive clousers, the original clouser was developed by Bob Clouser and became one of the most popular patterns for multi species in saltwater and freshwater. You can tell by the barbell eyes that they're easy to cast. They're not huge patterns with heavy weighted eyes that make casting unenjoyable. These casts, you don't even think about it. You can see the original hook has been broken off. And you can see there's some mono that's been tied in here. It's tied into the head. And that's what this Gamagatsu, number four or number six, you can see the size of it against my thumbnail but it's a black octopus and it's just tied back, looped, easy to replace when you need to put a new hook in. These patterns were tied by uh, one of the owners of Legacy Lodge and I want to show you, uh, his name is Phil Dawson and I actually stole them from his fly box. Uh, he did offer, he said, Mark, if you want to look through the fly box, if there's something you like, please take it. Um, I'll show you how many of his patterns that I did like. There was a major theft went on. Billy Miner was in town. 
Uh, but we completed a show just on this pattern. I don't want to get off track, but he's got some pretty cool ideas here and uh, that have been taken from patterns over the eons that saltwater fly guys have tied. But I can tell you today, if it wasn't for, I'm going to show you two patterns. Won't make it complicated. Take a very close look at that for the tying. Extremely light, but this stinger hook allowed us to hook up fish quicker, battle fish, and also release with no damage to the fish. So there's one. That's magic one from the Billy Miner theft. Look at this. Exact same principle, the broken off main hook on a straight saltwater hook on this one. The small eyes, you can see the same deal. It's tied in here, some black mono. This is the silver octopus gamagatsu that you just thread a new one on when you're done. But you can see the smaller the hook, they're called stingers, uh, the more effective for holding and playing these fish. So not a lot to talk about today other than the fly lines that we were casting and stack mending are the Cortland Precision Subsurface 325 grain. You see this in a lot of shows because there's only two lines that we use and they're both extremely effective. From a regular nine foot tapered leader store bought, I like to get them down to 15 uh, at the least but you can go as much as 20. A typical bonefish leader is gonna taper down to 12 pounds. I get them a little bit higher so that I can just add a bit of tippet time to time, and those leaders are gonna last in case you get into a big Chinook as well, that up here can be 40, 50, 60, 70 pounds, and when you do have that opportunity, you wanna make sure you don't have 12 pound line on. So I just put on a piece of 15 for tippet material, and this fluorocarbon is very strong, super clear, good for knot tensile strength. And then the last part of the puzzle, eight weight fly rods, anodized saltwater reels, LX 3.8 made by Islander, incredible. You can see how we've stacked that 325 grain line and the absolute magic fly that have made these fish possible today. I must thank Phil Dawson and he'll be wondering where these flies are, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Incredible. There you go. Take that fly line. I don't know many species that will give you that many jumps. Gorgeous. Don't forget those techniques to go out searching. Look for these little coves or move down the coastline, north or south. Find that bait ball on your electronics. Look for the whales. Those whales have built-in sonar. They know how to corral bait, stack bait, and bus bait. And the salmon, it's a perfect relationship. Saltwater fly fishing for salmon. Stunning big northerns like that. Aren't they spectacular? Yeah, we're only talking about a 300 square yard bay here, but it's amazing how the topography of even small areas is uh, really unique. And uh, I've found it over shooting this series that it's been essential to get to know the fly water that you're gonna fish. So the day to day, you've got your spots that if they're not producing, you can go to your 
number two or three or four spot and also always be looking for new water like this is we've never fished this before we just relied on seeing the bubble feeding whales and then we were privileged to actually see um, about 20 minutes later salmon smashing swirling on the surface and uh, there's a massive bait right there so there was two indicators today that made us stay here but it was a 40 40 minute lesson on the water and just watching the marine environment because every one of these marine mammals you know works together in in some way in the ecosystem a healthy salmon wow look at you unreal there you go god well i hope you've enjoyed today's edition on saltwater fly fishing the Pacific for silver salmon on the fly. I can tell you what, if you're looking for a hobby that provides excitement and challenge, I can highly recommend saltwater fly fishing. It's a lifetime hobby that you'll truly never master in a lifetime, but it sure is fun trying. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. The Legacy Experience has been brought to you in part by Sage, Cortland, Islander Precision Fly Reels. Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line.